Hi, this is Diane Love to Bake on YouTube. And what we're going to make is actually pizza dough. But this particular pizza dough, well, we're going to use all-purpose flour and we're going to use uh, white whole wheat flour in it. Um, and I also want to tell you that we're also putting in a wheat gluten also into it. In fact, I want to get the package to show you. Now you can buy whatever type brand that you want. Now I made the dough in my bread maker. You certainly can make it by hand if you prefer, but I like the consistency and it's just a lot easier for me to use my bread maker on the dough cycle. I'm going to give you the recipe right off the bat because I no longer uh, print out the um, ingredient list and recipe list below the video. So you're going to need one cup of hot water at least at 110 uh, Fahrenheit degrees, one and a half teaspoons of dry active yeast, two cups of all-purpose flour, three quarters of a cup of your white whole wheat flour, and three tablespoons of your wheat gluten, whatever you know company that you prefer and one teaspoon of salt and three tablespoons of olive oil and you'll make a dough and what I like about this particular uh, pizza dough is that it has the benefits of the whole wheat flour and it really is delicious now if you don't like this particular um, recipe because of the flour please check out my other videos because I've got high gluten pizza doughs, I've got all purpose, I've got um, the whole wheat rather than the white whole wheat. I have so many out of um, 650 or more videos that I have on now. I have a lot of pizza doughs and breads and a lot of Italian uh, pastries and cookies and that kind of thing. I'm going to start off first talking about the pan that I'm using. So many times people have written and said, well, what size pan are you using and whatever. So I want to show you um, some of the ones that I use. Now I want to, you know, to apologize for the way that some of them look, uh, but they are well used. Uh, I will tell you that these pans were from my parents' restaurant from many years past. We were in the restaurant and catering business, so um, these are really uh, the remnants of pans that were from, um, a, 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 like I said, from years ago. So they might look, you know, quite tattered and used, but I, I just love them. Uh, they have great memories uh, because I grew up in that business. So first off, what we're going to talk about is using the pan that I'm going to use for this video today. And it's an 11-inch pan. Now, I get three of these out of this recipe, okay? Now, the next size up is a 12-inch, which is here, okay? That's a 12-inch. And this next one is a 15-inch, and you can see how much bigger. This one, of course, is the last one that I have, very well used, you can see that. And this is a 17 inch. Now, this particular recipe will yield you three of these, this, you can see the smallest one, the 17 inch, or it'll make a nice um, 12 inch pizza out of it. It depends how thick or thin that you want it, okay? But you'll be able to see the one that I did and you'll get an idea on its thickness, okay? But again, this recipe I use um, out of this little 11 inch, I get three of them. So let me show you the dough. Now this is, I've actually cut them up. You'll get again three, three out of them, okay? Like that, all right? And we'll just set this aside for the third one. And then I'm just gonna put a little um, flour on my countertop here. I don't like to use a lot of flour. Um, I, I don't want um, the dough to be real heavy or dense with a lot of flour. 
And again, I'm using a rolling pin from the family's business. So I love using it. And it's a big one, that's for sure. Okay, and then just roll it out and then begin to, you know, stretch the dough. This is a pretty easy uh, dough to work with. It's not real uh, uh, sticky. Uh, it's pretty elastic um, due to the gluten that you put in there. Uh, it doesn't really tear uh, real easy, as you can see. And then, of course, oil your pan real well. And then, of course, just put your dough on your pan and then just start to uh, shape it. It doesn't have to be perfect. I actually like when they look a little lopsided uh, than perfect. But for you folks out there that, you know, are more of a perfectionist than I am, you know, just even it out as best as you can and that kind of thing. So you don't have, you know, a high and a low edge on the crust. And then just press with your fingers. Because it's like working with soft clay in a way. That's what makes me think of, um, of it, okay? And you get the idea, all right? Now, the next thing is, um, and about eight ounces of sauce, whether it, you want to make your own or buy from the grocery store, um, I have also uh, sauces on my um, channel, so if you want to check that out. And it really depends how much or little that you like. But I find that the 8 ounces, you know, like I said, it covers, it covers the three pizzas pretty well. Okay? Alright. And then I'm just going to put some um, Parmesan on top. Give it a little bit of a kick to it. Okay. And that's actually two teaspoons and I'm not using all of that. But again, if you want to. And you of course are going to put whatever that you want on your pizza. Whether you're just going to put just cheese or pepperoni or hamburger or pineapple, green pepper, mushrooms, onions, anchovies. So many people um, make their pizzas however they like, whatever kind of topping. My family tend to like this one with the uh, cheese and onion. But everybody has a different idea or what they like and they don't like. As far as the cheese goes, um, I usually try to use about 8 ounces of cheese for the three pizzas. But again, if you want to put more or you want to put less, that's up to you. I'm just trying to give you a little idea, um, you know, because it, it really, I'm really doing the video more for the, for the dough itself than making the pizza. But I do get questions, so I'm giving you that information. And then I'm just going to put some pepperoni on the pizza. And it depends how much you like, whether you like to put double pepperoni or um, a small amount. I For this, this is actually a small amount for me. I, I, I used to actually have them touching each other, but I thought I'd make this one with a little bit less uh, than double pepperoni uh, on it. Okay, now you're going to bake this pizza at about 450 degrees. Uh, if, if you're concerned that that seems too high, you can go 425. You know, all our ovens set up so differently, but you do want a high temperature. You want to get this dough, uh, uh, get, get it going, get it baking, get a rise out of it, and that high heat is going to help you do that. Uh, and then, you know, it can take 15 or 20 minutes. Uh, just keep checking on the bottom uh, with a spatula or a fork to see that it doesn't get too, too dark. Um, I like particularly my crust very well done. Uh, some people might find that they think that's overdone or it looks crisp. But it's up to you what you like uh, and how long you leave it in there, okay? So uh, we'll just set that aside for the moment. I'm going to rinse my hands quickly and then I'm going to show you a pizza that uh, has been baked up, but I certainly want to rinse my hands well.
Okay, and this is how it will bake up. Uh, this is that same size that I just did in the video, okay? Uh, it's still slightly warm, not really hot. I'll turn it over. You can kind of see the bottom. It's nicely golden brown on the bottom. And as far as its thickness, I would say, you know, some people might think that's more on the thin side. I would say that's about a medium crust. Now, again, it's going to be up to you. What size pan do you have? What do you want? Do you want it thick? you want it medium? you want it thin, thick? It's really, it's really up to you. Um, but it really makes for a delicious uh, pizza. Now, the crust itself will have a hard finish to it, okay? And on the bottom, it'll be more of a, of a, um, uh, a softer, a softer, uh, chewier um, bottom to it. But the edges are going to be beautifully crisp. And again, you can leave it longer if you feel that this is too light. Bake it a little longer. This one was in, I would say, about oh, 17, uh, 17 minutes in the oven at at um, 450. Uh, so it, you know, it's up to you. But again, it gives you an idea of that thickness. It is a nice um, uh, uh, chew, though, when you bite into this with the crispy crust, the hard crust on the outside. Yet it's uh, delicate enough where you don't feel like you're eating cardboard or something like that. It has a nice chew to it, and uh, it makes for a great uh, pizza. It really does. And, you know, I hope you try this recipe. And if you do, leave a comment because I'd like to hear from you. I mention this in all my videos. Again, I do, I'm sorry that I don't place my uh, recipe below the video, but it's due to so many people taking my work and posting them and pinning them. And, and, uh, and it, it, it's very frustrating. It's frustrating because when you write to me, I'm not getting those messages or those questions or those comments uh, if you're not solely watching me on YouTube. So um, I want to thank you for always watching Diane Love to Bake on YouTube. If you're so inclined and you'd like to subscribe, well, I'd really appreciate that. If you'd like to give the video a like or ring the bell, that would be very, very much appreciative. So I want to thank you again for watching Diane Love to Bake on YouTube. And stay well, stay safe. I'll see you soon.